Hello there, YouTubers. What you're looking at is a very rare sight. A workbench with nothing on it. Oh yes, I cleaned it all up. Why did I clean it up? Oh yes. Tonight we're finally going to continue working on the Marantz model 2265B receiver from 1978. There have already been two previous videos about repairing this, so you may want to watch those once again because it's been quite a while. But anyway, where we left off the last time was the broken main amplifier up there. And with a nice and clean workbench, I guess it is safe to take this out and start repairing it. As you know, this is kind of a special thing, so I don't want to work on this in between a billion of other things. So, um, as you can see, using the uh, component tester, I was able to uh, find some components, some uh, replacement components for a main amplifier. Now, the uh, one transistor, this uh, shorted thing, we are going to replace it uh, with a BD-140 which is uh, this one right here. And the great thing is, it's an exact replacement. Uh, it's not the same, it doesn't have the same model number, but it's the same case and everything. So I can pop this right on here and it'll be good to go. Well, maybe add some heat sink grease. Although it doesn't seem to have anything on there the way it is. Anyway, so we have that. Uh, then, I'm going to also replace the uh, complementary transistor, uh, which still works, but I do want to replace it with a, a BD-139. And uh, I have uh, matched those using the component tester, so they do have pretty much the same uh, current amplification factor. And then, since uh, I have no idea what caused this uh, transistor here to blow up, uh, for safety, we're also going to replace all the capacitors, and as you can see, uh, thank heaven, there aren't too many of those. So, I got all these. They're not brand new. I got them out of my parts bin, but once again, using the component tester, I uh, measured capacity and ESR, and all of these capacitors have pretty low ESR, like, you know, just a few milliohms. And so that's, uh, that's all going to be okay. And uh, it's all brand name capacitors, not all Nichicon like uh, in this, uh, in the original condition, but it ought to be fine. So let me get out the uh, main amplifier module so that we can uh, start. Power amplifier module has been successfully removed for yet another time. You can see. Uh, already replaced that broken transistor. There is our new BD-140. And yes indeed, on the original transistor there was no heat sink grease whatsoever, so uh, well, being the perfectionist that I am, I put on some for this transistor. Here is the uh, original transistor. As we put this onto the component tester, you can see it's not a transistor, it's a short. 6 ohms and 9 ohms. That's not going to amplify anything. The BD-140 is in its new home. I have removed the original 2SD-415 right there in the uh, component tester. It is the NPN transistor. Current amplification factor only 57, so it's definitely a good thing that uh, I'm also replacing this one because, as I already said, I did match the two new BD types. This is the BD139, and it has 122, so that's more than twice as high. Bit of an imperfection, um, so. At a later day, I may also replace the two on this channel to uh, kind of uh, balance the two channels again. That might be a good idea. Um, I don't have another BD-139, so I can't do it right now. And also, of course, never touch a running system. <laughs> uh, so, that's, uh, that's that. 
Of course, all the connections are the same, and I did check. Interestingly, it doesn't seem to say in the data sheet what this uh, metal in the back is connected to on the uh, BD types, but as it turns out, uh, just like on this original one, uh, the metal back is connected to the center tap, which is the collector. And as you can see, number two is in place. So theoretically, should all be ready to go again, but uh, you can see I have marked all the capacitors on this. We're now going to go ahead and uh, replace them all. And there we have all the old capacitors. And believe it or not, Unfortunately, I have to say, because I did expect that to be different, only these two ended up being bad. These are some coupling capacitors, so if they are bad, it's going to affect the sound, but it's definitely not going to cause anything to blow. These were these had kind of a high ESR, 5 ohms. I think the replacements have like 1 ohm, so that's a noticeable improvement. Here we have the board with all the new caps on there. And it's all looking quite good. Um, yeah, with those four caps in the center, um, the data sheet says 10 microfarads at 16 volts. Uh, we did have uh, 10 microfarads at 35 volts in there, so that was uh, a bit confusing. I ended up putting in the uh, the 10 microfarad 16 volt caps that the data sheet calls for because um, all the uh, 10 microfarad capacitors with a higher voltage rating I had were just some crappy Chinese things with pretty high ESR, so not good. Anyway, what I'm doing right now, you can probably see, especially if you compare this circuit board to how it looked in the previous repair episodes. Well, I was glad when I found out that I actually did get a replacement bottle of Contact WL. This is this uh, really, really aggressive circuit board cleaner. And this had, I don't know what on earth that was, it, it just had tons and tons and tons of some nasty brown gunk on there. So, use that to clean that all off, and it is drying right now. So, really glad that I got that done. You can see, did catch some of the fluid coming off of the circuit board using this thing, and you can see that's quite nasty. Let's see, there was some more right there. Blech. So, that's all fine. Uh, the thing I want to do now uh, is on this board, um, of course, as usual, when somebody attempts to repair something and he doesn't know what he's doing, the power amplifier is bad and the safety relay doesn't click, of course, first thing they try is to mess about with the uh, protection relay, so as you can see, that's having some really sad looking soldering on there, so going to take that all off, clean the circuit board with contact WL and resolder it and uh, you know, make sure it's all fine. And there we have the relay solder joints all nice and clean. And here we have the power amplifier module all back together and also cleaned up. Now in case you wonder why I'm so crazy about cleaning this, well, dirt on the circuit board can lower the resistance. So what previously was almost infinite resistance with dirt on it may just be very high resistance. So you are changing the characteristics of the circuit board which, of course, is uh, something that you really don't want. So, I'm glad that I got this cleaned up. So, I'll now have to resolder those uh, thermal resistors, sensors, up there, and then it can all go back together and into the receiver, ready for a first test. And here comes the first moment of truth. I have the amplifier module back in its place, however, I have not yet hooked up the channel that we have hopefully fixed. As you can see, that does not have power yet. 
I only have the channel hooked up that uh, previously was working, so we're just going to see if it still works. And if it doesn't, well, I guess we're in for some trouble. Let's turn it on. Oh yes, relay clicked. We are getting some hiss from the tuner. So, that works. Now, the real moment of truth, does the other channel work? Well, we are all hooked up. Let's go ahead, see what happens. Uh, fingers crossed. Yes! We did it, most definitely. A relay clicked. We're getting a lot of hiss. Really quite loud. So, let me try this a little more and then I'll be back. The 1968 Bang & Olufsen speakers have now been hooked up to the Marantz receiver. Now, some things I already noticed while playing around with this. I will have to do something about those drivers. Either I will have to uh, replace the original transistors in the, uh, in the good channel with the uh, new BD types as well, or I will have to find some different replacements with uh, lower amplification factor uh, for the once broken channel because uh, <laughs> with the uh, with that difference in the amplification factor that we've seen uh, one channel is just much 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 louder than the other as you can see uh, at the balance control had to turn it almost all the way over to get stereo yep that position is actually uh, perfectly balanced stereo so definitely have to do something about that uh, the other thing uh, while the reception of the tuner is good uh, I will have to readjust this uh, the center tuning because I have a station tuned to the center right now and so you can see the meter is not showing the center. Uh, and of course I will be replacing all those light bulbs and I will be doing something about the diffuser paper. As you can see it's, uh, eh, it's looking all kind of sad and kind of dark. That light bulb right here is out, and the stereo indicator light is out as well. But anyway, uh, well, last minute or so, let's just turn up the volume and uh, tune through some of the stations. Album. 45 minutes for him, also to come through it unscathed as well.